In this video, we'd like to go over the basics of data modeling with GridDB. Uh, before we get into that, though, let's take a look at the other databases within the NoSQL space, and then we can get into what makes GridDB unique. Um, so first, the major difference between NoSQL databases and relational SQL-based databases is the lack of intercollection relationships. So in a regular SQL, you would use joins between two different tables, and they're all related. Anyway, so first let's just go down the line here, uh, left to right, and uh, kind of describe what exactly it is. So first up is a uh, key value pair. So uh, famous examples of this kind of database is uh, React and Redis. Uh, so key value stores are the most simplest form of database management systems, as you can see just from the image itself. Uh, they can only store pairs of keys and values. So key and value. And you can only retrieve values when the key is known. So this is, uh, as said, very simple. So you can't really use this for very complex use cases. So um, these are typically used in resource-starved applications like embedded systems. Um, and then these are used in high-performance in-process databases. It makes sense. It's very simple. Uh, high-performance usually comes from that. Okay, and then next up is the key column database. So this is generally uh, thought of as Cassandra and HBase. So in a key column type, instead of organizing data by rows, like in traditional relational data model, it organizes it by um, column. And in Cassandra's case, there's a key that points to um, a table underneath that is organized by column. Uh, the main benefit of this is faster search and data aggregation. So the data in a column in this sort of database is stored as a continuous uh, disk entry. So search is much faster um, when querying uh, columns. OK? Um, and that's actually why Cassandra is usually seen as a highly performant. Same, same with Redis, actually. But OK, and then next up is uh, a key document here. So it's kind of like key value in that the key points to a value. But this time, the value is a document, so some kind of uh, complex data structure like JSON or XML. So these are um, usually MongoDB and Couchbase. So um, these are very easy to use because there's no schema at all. So um, neither does key value, but like as I mentioned, that's already very uh, sim simplistic. Um, so a lot of times I think I hear people say that NoSQL databases are schemaless. And that's not true for all of them. It's mostly true for MongoDB, which is the most popular NoSQL database at the moment. So um, since there's no schema, it's very easy to just insert new data all the time because it's kind of flexible that way. Okay, and then of course we also there's also the the traditional relational database, which has been in use for many many decades. It's still the most popular database in use by far. Um, so uh, I think most people know how this works, right? It's organized by rows and has a strict schema. So you have to design your tables before you insert data into it. And it's not very easily flexible. Uh, but that sort of rigid rigidness brings with it a lot of benefits. So um, I don't have a graphic for that. Um, but there's a reason for that I'll get into in a sec here. So then we'll talk about what GridDB's um, data model is. So GridDB uses a unique um, key container data model. So in this model, a key points to a container, which is essentially a columnar table. So um, there's no relational graphic because you can essentially look at this as a relational database table. So in GridDB, the key will point to a table like this. Um, so the, the container's key is often referred to as its name. So if this if this key was let's say uh, sensor one, then th this uh, entire container would be called sensor one. That that's just how it works. So uh, different containers can have different schemas and row key types, but unlike SQL type tables, containers can't have constraints where values in one container have a fixed relationship with another container. So that's what I was mentioning earlier that um, there's no inter collection relationships. So uh, in GridDB, generally data from one device, sensor or input, will be stored in one collection. 
Um, and so having this sort of um, data model means that um, GridDB also has a fixed schema, which has a bunch of benefits relating to um, availability and consistency. Um, yeah, which I'll get into later. Okay, so as mentioned, GridDB has uh, two types of containers. There's a collection container and a time series container. Um, so let's imagine that we have um, a water billing application. So in this application, we have um, an account, and that account has some sensors um, attached to it, and um, we bill based on water usage. So in, the, in this example, we would have the two container types. So we have the container uh, collection container, and then on the right, we have the time series container. So on the left, the collection container will, as you can see, contain the metadata for the account. So we have the account ID, which in this case would be the row key. So in a collection container, any type of row key is available. So in this case, we have an int. So the uh, row key is this ID number, unique. And then um, the rest is just standard relational table, right? So just uh, it goes in a row here. So billing name is Bill Smith. And then uh, here we have the sensor ID is of type... Um, array so there's two sensor IDs and each sensor ID so for example this first one will be a time series collection uh, time series container so um, this sensor ID is here and that's the key and um, as you can see in the time series container the timestamp is always a row key so here um, it iterates every minute and every minute it pushes new uh, water liters and a water PSI so um, with this data model, um, it makes maintaining data for a bunch of different sensors and inputs uh, very neat and clean because uh, obviously each sensor having its own table makes it very easy and very, very, very clear which data goes where and very easy to do data aggregation and uh, iterate through the data. Um, so just a tidbit here. So in a collection container, row keys can either be unique or not. So this is determined. Um, so if you were creating the Java object, um, you would put the add sign row key attribute in front of the type. And um, that would indicate to your application that this is the row key. Okay, next we wanted to show how our hypothetical billing application would look um, in, in the GridDB data model versus a more traditional relational database model. So we'll start with the GridDB model. So as mentioned, um, each sensor ID will get its own container. So you can see the relationship here. So um, first you have the account um, record, which is a collection container. And um, that one will have an array of sensor IDs. And each sensor ID will also have its own container, a time series container in this case. And um, so that'll split up everything. So each sensor will have its own container. So if this billing application had 100,000 different sensors, then we'd have 100,000 different containers. And so over time, each sensor would push data into the appropriate uh, sensor ID container, and customers would be written to the accounts container with the sensor IDs that apply to their account. So when it comes time to generate bills, the billing application would iterate through the rows of accounts reading each of the readings containers to calculate the bill. So GridDB's key container data model allows developers an easy and efficient way to model data, whether it's time series or not, of many individual inputs into many different containers that can be aggregated and iterated through uh, extremely easily. So the benefit being that since everything is in its own container, aggregation and iteration is uh, it scales much much better and it's much faster so on the flip side if you look at the relational side all the sensors will be in one table so you, there's a couple of ways you can do this and we actually tested this um, but I, I think we found that this is the most efficient way to do it in the relational side so you put all the um, accounts same way like this into one uh, with the sensor ID associated here so actually there's no um, array I don't think so you'd, you'd have to um, have a, an, an account for each sensor ID like this. You can't combine like this. But anyway, so you would have to throw all the sensors in to one giant table. So if we start reaching gigantic numbers like 100,000 sensors as mentioned earlier, you can imagine how bloated and slow 
um, this table would get. Um, so if you try to, to run some aggregation or iteration uh, functionality on, on a relational side, the speed would not be kind to you. So as you continue to grow and grow and grow, it would just get slower and slower and slower. So maybe when it's a small application, it might it might work well for you and it might be easier for you if you're more familiar with relational data. But as it grows, you'll definitely feel the impact of having such a huge, gigantic table. Okay, so we wanted to show you um, if you wanted to create the, the simple data model we showed you in the previous slides with the, um, the accounts and then each sensor, we wanted to show you what it would look like in Java, which is the default language for GoodDB. But of course, there are different, um, you can use other languages like Go or Node.js or Python or whatever you like. But uh, we're showing you Java because it's a default. So in Java, a container is defined by a static class of variables, so timestamps, simple strings, numbers, geometry types, blobs or arrays of strings, and numbers are all supported. Uh, there'll be a full list in the blog version of this video you can check out. Um, so in other languages, a container is defined by a container info object. Um, so yeah, so here obviously if you wanted to create that, um, the model we showed you before, this is what it looks like and this is the row key as mentioned before. So placing this here will let you know that this is the row key for this container. So it, it, it's pretty straightforward. So um, the documentation will show more hands-on coding, but that's what it looks like. Okay, so that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below or email us at contact at griddb.net. Thank you.